Hi everyone, this is a short screencast for Independent Colleges Dublin for uh, November 2014 for SEMA E1. Uh, and in this particular screencast, we're going to be looking very briefly at uh, um, corporate governance, but in particular at stakeholders and uh, Mendelow's matrix. Um, now, the first issue with uh, stakeholders is really their definition. And the definition that you see here is really just uh, individuals or indeed groups who have an interest in the entity or the organization, what it does. Perhaps another uh, uh, definition might be uh, uh, entities or indeed individu individuals or groups who are affected by or can be affected by or can affect the organization. What you'll see down below here is just classifications of stakeholders. Now, there's quite a few different ways that you could classify stakeholder groups. The one that they use here, uh, the mnemonic ICE is relevant, I-C-E. And what they do is they look at uh, contractual uh, relationships for internal stakeholders, for example, with employees and, and indeed management, and also contractual in the sense of connected stakeholders, i.e. shareholders or indeed perhaps customers or suppliers. So on the left and the right, you'll see um, those who have a contractual relationship, i.e. internal and connected, and then in the middle, just external. Another method perhaps of uh, classifying stakeholders in, the, in this way would be primary versus secondary. In other words, the idea that the primary stakeholders would be the internal and, and the connected and, and the secondary stakeholders would be the external, i.e. those having no contract as it were. Okay. Um, now, the important thing with stakeholders and I guess with uh, uh, corporate governance, it's just that this idea that each stakeholder is going to have uh, 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 their own need. In other words, each stakeholder is going to have some form of particular interest in the country, in the uh, company. And in this particular case, we looked at employees. Obviously, their interest is uh, their jobs and obviously being paid. Uh, perhaps uh, government interest would be uh, uh, tax revenues and indeed the entity complying with the law. You'll see that uh, along the E stream and indeed with uh, E1 as well from time to time, that where you have mention of stakeholders in the question, it's very possible that there's going to be some sort of conflict, you know, uh, a conflict between the various needs that uh, each of the stakeholder groups wants to sort of defend, as it were, as to use the word that they use within this particular slide. Just a quick word on, on, on corporate governance and uh, perhaps why it's relevant here. Really what corporate governance means is the, the way in which um, companies are managed or indeed controlled or, or, or perhaps directed. And uh, you should be familiar with the basics of uh, corporate governance at E1 level in the sense that uh, it derives to a large extent from the number of corporate scandals that have occurred over the last sort of 20 years or so. And there is a, a, a there are a variety of approaches to uh, corporate governance, not least the uh, uh, guidelines or principles based approach in the sense that uh, uh, government regulation uh, and other bodies lay down some sort of uh, uh, um, uh, principles that need to be adhered to, you know, for example, uh, a, a strong board of directors and uh, a, a separation of, uh, 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 of duties for the CEO and the chairman of the board. So really what corporate governance does is it is set out uh, to a large extent a, a, a series of sort of uh, guidelines that companies really need to adhere to, particularly listed companies. And what they're trying to do is to really regulate the way in which companies are managed and, uh, and controlled. OK, um, now referring specifically uh, uh, to Mendelow here, you'll know that uh, Mendelow is a very popular theorist in this area of stakeholders. And really what he provides us with is a very, very basic grid. You know, given the fact that uh, um, uh, managing stakeholders can be difficult, and as I mentioned uh, uh, above, there can be conflict, what Mendler suggests that uh, an entity does is really plot their stakeholders on a grid with the axes being, you know, the level of interest they have in a particular uh, situation and indeed the level of power that they have. So what Mendelow is effectively saying is that, you know, you can manage stakeholders by classifying them, classifying them on this grid in terms of their level of power and interest. Now, obviously, each stakeholder group will be different. And indeed, you know, some stakeholders will have a very, very high level of interest uh, in the particular issue uh, uh, that's at hand and perhaps a particularly high level of power as well. Perhaps they're providing the finance, perhaps it's the, uh, uh, the stakeholders.
Uh, so in this particular case, um, what we would do is say that uh, the level of interest is high, uh, the level of power is high, and as you'd imagine with that type of stakeholder, the entity needs to pay particular attention to them because they are strong uh, and their interests need to be adhered to. Um, conversely, perhaps, and we'll see down below the classifications for A, B, C, and D, where you have a level of interest that is low and indeed power that is low, what Mendelow suggests is that those stakeholders are not really high priority for the entity in this particular situation. So therefore, the level of effort uh, attributed to them should be quite low. So what you'll see below is um, just the, the various possibilities. So in essence, then, all that we're trying to do is map uh, individual stakeholders into the grid. So key players, as I've just mentioned, uh, are found in category uh, D or segment D, high power, high interest, what should we do? Well, we should certainly um, be keeping them close uh, and really monitoring them very, very carefully. On the other end of the scale, as I've just mentioned, you have uh, stakeholders in uh, category A or segment A, and those would be stakeholders with really a low interest in the particular issue and very, very low power. So they don't have any ability to really sort of impact upon the entity or the business. So really minimal effort would be required there. So that's a, a, a very, very brief summary. This is an important little area for uh, um, uh, the e-stream of your SEMA study. So do get a grip on the um, uh, definition uh, of stakeholders, uh, the classification, whether or not it's the ICE classification here, or indeed primary versus secondary. And just be aware of the fact that each stakeholder group has some sort of need, sometimes called a want uh, and that that want may well be very, very relevant to the company, uh, particularly if that individual uh, stakeholder group has high power and high interest in the particular uh, uh, um, issue at hand. Um, also be aware of the grid uh, uh, power versus interest and the fact that different stakeholders will be managed or need to be managed in different ways. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Thank you.